Well, Andrew, you've got the um, binnacle cover back off again. Um, what what are you doing this time? Well, the last effort was to put the Wi-Fi into the network connector for the BNG box so we could see the screen downstairs and that eventually worked. No problem with the setup in here. It was more to do with um, getting the channels right for the iPad iPhones. Today's job is to fit this so which what? connects, which basically is the interface box from the old Raymarine SeaTalk 1 network to the NEMA 2000 network. I can't use NEMA 2000, it actually has to go through into the NEMA 0183 network, the older NEMA network. Um, but once it's in there, the, the computer in here will know what to do with it. It can convert it for itself. We just need to find a way to port it in. CTOP 1, as you can see there, that's the CTOP cables. It's only the yellow that does anything. Uh, the other two are power. I've just got to look, I've got two issues. One is I've got to find a place that it, it can now not all now fit in. This seems to work. Placed here, it's just an adhesive pad. That would be straightforward. Quite as low as that, it's gonna to have to be up like that somehow. So but that would be okay. But I had to make sure we can fit it because the wiring of this is way more complicated if it can't stay within this box. If I have to go down into the hull, into the floor of the boat to bring up a new wire to bring the secret talk connection up from its control box below this pedestal, then that just makes things a little bit longer. Anyway, it seems to fit. I've already closed this back up again. As long as I don't have to go up too far to get the cables in, I should be fine. Now, the original um, unit was a um, Raymarine, uh, yes. but we've got a BNG because the Raymarine started losing pixels on, on its, its screen. For uh, me, BNG is what I've always used on racing boats, so I'm well used to the interface and how it works. And this computer, if I can get the wind instrument here to feed into here, then um, I've got all the race computer wind information. And that means that you don't need to change this unit here and the unit at the top of the mast. Yes. Th right. This box should do the, the should transfer. Should do the, all the translation okay. of the codes. Yes. Right. Okay. So, as you can see, that's the Raymarine box. It's taking the CTOC signal that was returning down to the computer below, broken the wire, inserted the, the cables in here, picked them up again to come back out again, opposite, to go all the way back down, all the way back down, downstairs. That gave the box the little a microprocessor in here, the ability to know what CTOC language data is, and off of it came its out port and the come and the BNG's input, and it's this whole problem you have between what's this is transmitting, but this is receiving, but the cables just label transmit and receive so it doesn't always help as much as you would hope and a small problem I had to swap them around because out of here then comes the NEMA 0183 out from here back in to here to then go to the CTOC because there's information that this has that this doesn't have so basically we've now got a completely shared data set and if I just... I then went on to put the blue yellow in so that my 
Raymarine autopilot could tell my, it could, could listen to the B&G about what heading I wanted when I put it into, when I put a heading, when I would put a waypoint into the chart plotter, I want the autopilot to understand and it now looks until we actually go out and test who I don't completely know but it seemed that the boat's helm was turning to try and get onto a waypoint that I put in so it knows where this is. I'm hoping that this will actually all work now. I'm a fiddler getting all these cables into now a really quite small box but now more or less it's in the right place so we should come up here now we have the display this really never worked it could show where the heading was 209 but it couldn't do anything else because um, it didn't know where the wind was coming from because that was up here this is down here it didn't talk to this now it does so we can see um, starboard tack optimum angles port tack optimum angles because the bearing i've sent it is to go out of the marina as you can see the red line that one so the boat's sitting the boat is sitting oh, boat is sitting there in the marina i've sent it to go on a course out to the islands out off of here and now you can see the angles that the boat can make in either tack right Represented on the, the diagram. Now we're watching uh, the Wi Fi repeating down below and we can see some wind speed which we've never seen before in the chart plotter. So the NEMA uh, the, the converter um, is, is working and that's brilliant. We can see what the, uh, I think, what we've got apparent wind angle and the true wind speed um, showing up there. And we're sitting down below watching all this. We don't need to, to be upstairs in any bad weather. Brilliant. We've managed to get a link to work now on your iPad. Can you tell everybody what it was that had happened that caused your iPad not to pick it up? Turns out that the link app itself needed a setting to allow local access network and it was just a case of switching it from off which had obviously gone in to when it is how it installed it but because it was off it then couldn't see the network it could see sorry it could see the network it couldn't see the bng itself right so that was in settings okay yes settings going all the way down the list until you could see the app link and as soon as you could press that it, it allowed you to put a local network and rather annoyingly i'd been into setting so many times of the wireless network to see whether that was the mistake and couldn't see any difference between your ipad and my ipad or my phone so one installation somehow changed what it was, how it was, the app was set up. So, we're all... It all works and it it's looking works. good.